Hey everyone, welcome back to how to work with federal buyers to sell your products or services part two. This is part of our how to market to federal buyers in your industry series. I'm Michelle Brown with FedBiz Exchange and we broke this down into two parts, how to work with federal buyers to sell your products and services under federal contracting. And we did that because we want you to absorb as much as you can. Sometimes when the segments are too long, you don't get the concepts that we want you to get. So we try to break them down, even though it still may take 20 minutes here or there, but we want you to understand each specific portion. So let's get right into it. There are some other things I want to talk to you about when it comes to working with federal contractors. So here's what you'll learn in this second video, video part two. We'll talk about how COs, contracting officers, federal buyers, conduct market research for small business products and services. We'll talk about what you can expect from a federal contracting officer and a federal buyer. Sometimes when you don't know what to expect, you don't know what's normal, what's not normal. So I'm going to talk to you about some of those things so you know what to expect. How you should approach and market to federal contracting officers. You know, um, there is hardly ever any discussion about how to do that. The government has a lot of general information on the SBA website about how to market to federal contracting officers. And in my opinion, none of it is realistic. It doesn't tell you how to really do anything. It gives you a general approach. And once you do some of the things they're telling you, you find that it doesn't work. So you, we have to be realistic about this and understand what does it mean. And even though I don't have this portion uh, that I'm going to mention in this particular video, I will do a separate video about bidding. Bidding is the highest form of marketing that you can do. And I know there are people out there that are probably thinking, well, that's not marketing. In this case, it is because when you are bidding, they get to know who you are. They get to know your company. They get to know what you offer. So I will add a separate uh, video on that. But I've given you some general information about what you need to do to market in part one. And then I'm going to finish up with part two and you'll feel like you at least know the contracting officers and then I have a specific uh, five-step video that I'll talk to you about which uh, puts it all together for you okay so we'll talk about how you should approach and market to federal contracting officers so how contracting officers conduct market research is a mystery to most people, but it's not that difficult. I'm going to explain to you and show you what they use. They can only go to a couple of places in addition to your website, uh, your information, your capability statements, things like that. But first, the contracting officers by law are required to conduct market research to locate small business vendors. It's a major part of their jobs. However, although it's a major part of their jobs, most don't do it as often as they should because they are very busy. I'm not giving them an excuse. I'm just telling you the truth. And I don't want you to think they're going to come looking for you. Sometimes when they do, it is a pleasant surprise. But most of the time, you need to let them know that you're there. So they do market research when they need to meet small business goals or they're under pressure to get a set aside um, through a certification. Like if they need a woman to do something on a project or if they need a woman to be a prime on a project or a veteran or something like that. But for the most part, you should think of it as it's a gift if they come looking for you and they find you. But otherwise, you need to make sure that you have set yourself up to receive as many opportunities as possible. And I'm going to tell you how to think 
about that and how to manage yourself, how to handle yourself. You know, I've already told you about a couple, but you need to know that they're not going to come searching for you all the time. They also locate small businesses in uh, the areas I was talking about, like the two areas would be SAM. That's where you sign up to do the federal contracting, but they don't find um, as much in SAM in a bulk group setting. So if they're looking for five or more women in California that do um, long haul trucking or something like that, they may not find that in SAM that way. They could, but they get an easier picture if they do it through the SBA small business dynamic search. They know those people are immediately small businesses. They can pull them by the state and they'll automatically get their email addresses, uh, your address, your physical address, all of your NEICS codes and things like that. So it's much easier for them to go through the SBA small business dynamic search. And then as a small business, you can only get to the small business dynamic database and update your information by going through SAM. I'm going to show you what that looks like, but some of you are not updating that and you need to keep that updated because that's how the contracting officers are going to find you. And then small businesses must do their research. So you must do your research and homework as well, because remember, I keep saying this. You must find the codes that the COs are using. So before you update your database where they're going to come looking for you, you need to make sure you have in the right code so that when they're putting in the codes they use, when I say they, I'm talking about the contracting officers, when they put in the codes that they use, then you will be there. So it's just that simple. You follow them. You research them you mimic them. They're not going to come and mimic you. So if you have the right codes in there from, from, from what the contracting officers are putting in there, then they'll be able to find you. If you don't, they won't find you. So you have to do your research and your homework. This is the Small Business Dynamic Search database. And it looks just like this. The uh, physical address doesn't really matter because you can't get to it and update it without going through SAM. So you need to go to SAM.gov and yes, you have to go through the entire process, meaning you have to go through every page of SAM. I've asked them and asked them about finding other ways. They don't have other ways. I guess they prefer it that way because if you change your small business status to regular status, then you're no longer a small business and they probably don't want to give you access. But you will get to this small business database when you get to the end of SAM, the last couple of pages, and it will ask you, do you want to update your small business dynamic profile? You should say yes, and it will open up the doors to this, this application that you're looking at on my screen. Okay, and it'll allow you to update certain areas. The update areas would be the area of identification, location, and contacts. Most of that will be populated through SAM. So if you want to update that in SAM, you have to update that in SAM in order for it to update here. And as you can see, you can see all of your information here, your website, you know, so you should have a website because all they'd have to do is click on the link and do the research. The next page, this is one long sheet. Uh, when, we, when the contracting officers view it, it's one long sheet. When you get to it to update it, it's not one long sheet, it's in pages. So organization, ownership and certifications is on a separate page than what you just saw with your address and all of that. But here, the, here is the principal or the principals, the uh, office, the small business office that they would be connected to. And if they were 8A, if they were certified, that would show here. If they had small business certifications, that would show here. And they are not a hub zone company. But if they were, it would say yes right here. Most of this is also filled in automatically. Now, this information here is not filled in automatically. 
you should have as many primary and uh, your primary source code and then all of your other uh, NAICS codes, your PSC codes. Um, this construction and bonding information, this was put in by the business owner. The percentage of business types was put in here. You should have a good narrative right here. A lot of you leave this blank, which is not good. You should also have a, um, well, if you don't have any special equipment or materials, that's fine. But any questions that they ask you, you should fill it in. Don't leave it blank unless it is not applicable. Products and services. Now here are your keywords. This is huge. You have got to put in the keywords that the contracting officers are using. And again, someone would say, well, how would I know that? You would know that because you did your homework. I've showed you over and over again how to do that by running a USA spending report and running a report based on your own NAICS codes. And if you start seeing and finding codes for NAICS and PSC codes, that are different than what you are used to, then you need to add those to the codes you're already using. So, you know, in, and where do the keywords come from? Well, in that USA spending report, the keywords are in there. That's how the descriptions are shown. So, and I know I probably need to do just a report on USA spending or a video, I should say, on USA spending so you guys could get that part. But I realize if you're not in a classroom with me, sometimes it can be completely difficult. But we have full day workshops about that. And you would be amazed at how much time it saves you and how you start winning faster because now you're past all this stuff. But you want to put in not just what the contracting officer puts in here, but you want to just keep straight to the point. You know, and you want to fill in these keywords. And um, if you want to be an exporter, import export activities, you would answer those questions. But look down here. You see down here performance history references. You don't have to put the contact telephone if you don't want to. That can be furnished on reference. But you need to put the type of contracts, when they started, when they ended, the value of the contracts. All of that, that's, those are the questions that the system will ask you. What's the value of the contract? Um, and then when did it start? When did it end? Because contracting officers are looking at this information and if they don't see any experience, they're not likely to call you. This company put in some, but that doesn't look very good. They didn't fill in the rest. They just put in these basic, um, the city and then the name of the company. They should fill in the rest. What size project was it? You know, and when did you do it? They want to know how recent your information is. It can be commercial as well, but take this seriously, okay? This is your profile. So how should you approach federal buyers as contracting officers? How should you approach them? Well, it's not going to always be easy to get the attention of a contracting officer. It's like they're hidden in plain sight, literally. So you know they're there, you know they're buying things, but nobody wants to tell you where they work, how to get there, you know, if you can ask for a meeting, things like that. But they're there. So let's just take some of these things into consideration and change our thinking just a little bit. So remember, they're extremely busy and everyone wants their attention. They're sending um, general emails out all during the day, but they're also receiving a lot of emails. You know, now, if you send a general email to the contracting officer asking a question, make it short and quick. And most of the time, they won't answer you unless it's about a bid solicitation. That's just the way it is. Sometimes they will, but just sending general marketing emails Generally speaking, it does not work. Not if you're expecting to get a response. If you want to send capability statements as a marketing email, that's fine. We're hoping that they'll take those and put those away, but you never know. But I just don't want you to get all upset because you sent out a bunch of emails, mass emails, and no one said anything because that does happen. It's just because of what I'm saying. They're so busy 
Everyone wants their attention and what they have to focus on is making purchases, buying things. So if you want to get their attention, you need to start selling things and you sell things to them by bidding. That's how you get their attention. They're buying from one to 25 products and services at a time. So you could have one person and when you look at a forecast report, you see it all the time. One person buying 20 different things. That's just the way it is. So they need you as a small business to understand that and to be ready to do business, period. So you need to understand how contracting officers and federal buyers think. You need to understand, and this will help you to stand out from the other inexperienced small businesses to get their attention. And it's like one of the things that I said, never really send them a general email you could send them a marketing capability statement uh, email, but, you know, just don't expect anything from it. Just hope that they will keep the information and use it when they need it. But don't expect for them to talk back to you back and forth. They have other venues for that, like industry day, uh, the capabilities briefing. But mostly they want to talk to you when they have a solicitation out there. So they know many, many, many small businesses aren't serious about going the long haul. So it's like a waste of time to them. It's not the right attitude, even though the law says that they have to market to you and they have to work with you. They have to go and find you. They have to do what we call a market search, meaning they're going out into the market looking for small businesses, but they're looking for the serious businesses and serious businesses bid. Non-serious businesses or businesses that are not serious, they don't bid. So they don't have time to waste like that. So CEOs, just remember, federal buyers and contracting officers, they need to buy things. So if you want their attention, bid on solicitations that put you uh, in their faces. Bid on solicitations in your industry and the CEO will get to know you because you'll be one of a few. Now, if you've been listening to me and learning from me, then you should know by now, your competition is very, very minimal, very minimal. People don't get that part. So you have a greater chance of winning than not winning. And if you bid consistently, you will win sooner or later. And it's not usually later. So they'll get to know you when you start bidding because they're looking at your company, what you have to offer, and what you submitted. When communicating with contracting officers, only ask questions about the solicitation or the bid. If there's a Q&A period, follow the Q&A time, timeline, meaning ask your questions during that time. No question is a stupid question, but make sure that you're getting their attention when you need it. And that's when it's about the solicitation or about the bid, and it's not a silly question uh, that maybe you feel uncomfortable asking. You can ask silly questions, but they're not the people that you ask what you, what you consider silly questions to. And me personally, especially as an instructor and a, a coach, I know that no question is silly. But when it comes to contracting officers, don't waste your time asking them about things that you could ask a PCR. Your PCR procurement center representative in your state is the person that is supposed to help you with questions about how do I get paid? How does this, this work? You know, how do I do this? How do I do that? You don't ask the contracting officer, how do I fill out this solicitation? They're not going to tell you. They, they're either going to ignore you or they're going to refer you to someone else because that's not what they do, okay? And then always put the solicitation number in the subject line when asking a question about a bid, but read before you ask questions. Read the solicitation to ensure that you understand and to ensure that you didn't miss anything. And lastly, if you have other questions, I already said this, go to sba.gov or call someone like me, write someone like me to find your procurement center representative or your PCR, and they will help you. That's their job. All of these small business specialists, procurement people, that's what they do. So the SBA has a responsibility for helping us all. 
and you should call them if you have any questions instead of um, asking the contracting officer. So for the most part, keep all of your contracting officer communication at a higher level and keep it about the bids and the solicitations. And if they don't do something they're supposed to do, then absolutely call them out on it by asking about it. You don't want to make enemies though, but you can definitely, if they said that a bid was going to be out on the 21st and it's the 25th, you put in that solicitation number and say, I've been looking for this solicitation. Is it out yet? And they will answer you. What can you expect from contracting officers? Well, you will get responses regarding bids and solicitations. You will not likely get responses about other items like marketing and general questions, unless the questions are about the procedure. They will not talk to you about your company one-on-one -on -one when there is a bid out for solicitation. Do not talk to them about a specific bid and your company. The only thing you should talk to them about when it comes to a bid solicitation and your company is how do I, you know, how if it's a question, for instance, about the Q&A. But you can't ask them to have a marketing meeting with you about your company meeting the expectations of the solicitation. You're supposed to do that before the solicitation comes out or after. They do not want to show favoritism. You can expect them to reach out to you via marketing research. I see that happen all the time, but you have to be set up properly. You have to be set up based on what the contracting officers and buyers in your industry, based on what they're doing, based on their keywords, based on their NAICS codes, based on their PSC codes. So if you have the PSC codes they're using, you'll get an email when they're looking for a small business. If you don't, you won't get an email because they won't be able to find you. This is why your research and homework is important. You can expect to meet contracting officers, federal buyers at industry day meetings. You can expect to meet them at capability briefings. And as a matter of fact, that's the best time. And it's so wonderful because they, they're getting to spend time with you one-on-one -on -one in the cap capability briefings and sometimes one-on-one -on -one in the industry day meetings if you are bold enough to go and approach them and talk with them after the presentation, which in my industry day video, I suggest that you do. I don't know why a small business would not take the time to meet decision makers, but I've seen it happen. So this is the best time. And do not ask them questions about how the federal contracting process works. They will not have confidence in doing business with you after that. You ask the PCR, somebody in the SBA, someone like me or someone at a, a PTAC, um, you do not ask the contracting officer that. They won't have confidence in you and they will know for sure you don't know what you're doing. So don't do that. It makes you look like you're not ready to compete in the federal arena, okay? And then lastly, do not ask them questions about what they buy. You must do your own homework. I have been teaching you how to do the five steps to winning and about doing your, your homework. So don't ask them questions about that. Go do your homework. If you need to ask a question like that, ask someone else. Do not ask the contracting officer that you're looking to do business with. And with that said, thank you for watching this video. You too can win federal contracts. All you got to do is focus, listen to me, do your homework, do as much research as you can, find other companies and businesses that are giving you free information, that are having workshops and giving you things that you need to get started with your federal contracts and you too can start winning big dollars in federal contracting. With that said, please leave me your comments and don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you need. Let me know what industry information you'd like to get because if you need it, I can probably get it. Thank you for watching. I'm Michelle Brown and see you in the next video.